Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're here in the 280Z Daily Driver project and we're going to be discussing the Easy EFI solution. So the Easy EFI solution installation on this car solved a lot of my outstanding issues. This car has already had a lot of work done to it. So I've changed out most of the suspension bushings. I've changed out the shocks. I have changed out the wheels and tires. And I have done a lot of basic maintenance. As you can probably tell, there's still a little noise from my transmission and from my differential that I would like to solve. But other than those minor drivetrain issues, this car is now very solid and I have been putting quite a few miles on it testing it. Apart from the initial learning process of the EFI system, which had a few little hiccups there, here and there, it's run fantastic. This is a massive improvement over the factory system. I can't identify whether or not it actually gained much in power, but it certainly feels better. If for no other reason than the TPS sensor giving a much better feel on granularity with the throttle. So overall, I mean, I'm thrilled with this system. There's a few other little quirks that I mentioned in the first video on the installation and some of the odds and ends when you're getting familiar with how to get it plumbed in here. But otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward process. I, did, I could have done it basically in less than a day if I had all the parts available and I had the original equipment out of the way. And that's essentially what I did when I got back from SEMA, even though I was deathly sick. Once you have the EFI system installed on the car, it's as simple as just driving and dialing everything in. I would say that the hardest part in dealing with this kit is deciding how to run the wiring and deciding what your objective is. In my case, I changed out the fuel injector, injectors simplified the fuel rail setup and I solved a bunch of other random issues the car had. So it's hard to pinpoint exactly what benefits are from where. But overall, this car is perfectly sound as a daily driver. I did have an unrelated minor catastrophe that comes with driving a 40 plus year old daily driver, which was once I had dialed in all the rest of it and I had the new exhaust installed, I decided to test the system out and as I was accelerating hard in second gear, the lines to the heater core decided to explode. So the passenger footwell was completely filled with hot coolant and fogged all my windows up. It was as easy as looping the cooling system with a screwdriver and driving the car back in with some new coolant, but it's a really annoying thing that comes with a daily driver of this age. Now, that had nothing to do with the EFI system, aside from the fact that because now I knew it had a better EFI system, and because I knew the injectors were good, and I knew the fuel pump was good, and I knew everything else was working, I was pushing the car harder than it had probably been pushed in the past. So that is one of the reasons why, even before I did any EFI upgrades or anything else, this car had received new brakes and all of its suspension components. I would highly recommend this kit to anyone who's struggling with the Bosch system or struggling to find parts. At the same time as installing this new system, I also deleted the EGR. The only reason I deleted the EGR is because you cannot buy parts for it anywhere that I have looked. The tube that connects the exhaust manifold to the intake manifold is essentially non-existent anywhere and to get one recreated because of the bizarre threading and the weird shape it needs to be at was going to be insanely expensive. So I just simply deleted it, took it off and tossed it into a box with all the other factory parts for this car. I'll keep all the factory parts in case someone in the future wants to reinstall them on this vehicle, but that won't be me. The EGR ultimately on a car with this many miles and this age will only make it a little bit more difficult to work on and will just muck up my intake manifold with dirty gas. So I don't mind leaving it off. I also, for a temporary measure, have the carbon canister out of the car. That has no impact on function and drivability one way or another. The carbon canister simply is there to reduce the smell of fuel vapors and, pr and reduce open air venting of fuel vapors. I'll be putting that back in once I clean up the hardware and find a couple bolts that it didn't have originally. 
Other than that, the basics of the EFI solution are such that this is a really good option for anyone out there who wants to solve some of those issues on your engine. Just without the additional items that I did, it replaces the wiring system, the computer, and replaces the basic sensors. With my solution, where I also went with Z Car Depot's fuel rail and the fuel injector adapters to the O ring fuel injectors, I have essentially modernized the entire fuel injection of the car. If I were to spend a little more time and I wanted to throw some more money at it, I would probably also pull out the distributor and go with a more modern distributor, possibly one of the Bluetooth controlled distributors where I would have more granular control over ignition timing. But for that to really have benefit, I would need to take this car to a dyno and be a lot more serious about aftermarket modifications. Whereas for right now, the car is basically factory and I'm going to leave it that way for quite a while. I will be racing it in some autocrosses next year, but it'll be more for fun than to be seriously competitive. The current plan is for my girlfriend to drive my S2000 and I will drive this car and she can try to beat my times with this old car with the much newer S2000. So if that sounds like something you guys are interested, keep your eyes open for around April or so when uh, the rain lets up and we can actually race. Once we get the cars in racing condition, I should also have the white car with the SR20 in it back out and we'll do an interesting comparison between this car and the SR20 car both from a drivability standpoint, but also from a weight and balance distribution standpoint. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope it isn't too rambly and ranty as I'm trying to drive and talk at the same time. But if you like these videos, please subscribe. And until next time, thank you for watching.